I'm specifically talking about natural immunity. Everybody in my household has had COVID except for me, but I am also the only one taking vitamin A, C, D3, zinc, and all that every single day. I'm not saying that's the key, but I'm saying if we're looking for all those things that may help the state, why are we not promoting those things among the people? Are you familiar with the, some of the comorbidities for uh, COVID and what makes you really ill? I'm, I'm very familiar with those. Obesity, yes, sir. Yes, sir. diabetes, hypertension, all those things. Where do you think Louisiana ranks in all those issues? We're high. And yeah. We, and we have to protect all those we're dead, people. We're dead last in much of them. So our focus has not been on that for so long that we're particularly at risk compared to every other state. It's not that the people are bad or not doing what they're asked a lot of times. It's that we're unhealthy to begin with. So I think that says something about our system. What do you know about the historical volume of RSV and influenza since COVID happened? Before and after, where are our numbers been? Oh, God, I'm, I'm not the right person to ask about, about the, the, what the data show about, okay. about well, RSV. So, and, and so what the LDH data shows is those numbers have been low since COVID. Right. I mean, ridiculously low because, well, as I, he I'm said. Not, I'm, I'm not, in fairness, I, I think mainly you're talking about flu. We have had a, a significant RSV issue this this summer, um, but so I'm. I, so what I, I'm I saying is that, that ranks historically. Though. Well, well, let's go to the PCR test. Do you know that's going to be discontinued in December? Yeah. And do you know why? I, I'm I'm sure you're going to tell me. Well, of course, because it's misclassifying things. We're saying this is COVID when it could be another upper respiratory problem. So they said, you know what, that's not a good test. Let's quit doing that. They were doing too many cycles on it, whatnot. So what I'm saying is we have misrepresented some numbers over time, and that's caused uh, a lack of trust in the system. I'm just going to say that. It's a big lack of trust in the system. Um, have you seen the, the video from St. Tammany Parish? I, I don't know what this, this just came up the other day. I guess it was the chief medical officer or maybe the parish president. We're on TV saying it's D-Day. This is the worst it's ever been. So some concerned citizens went out with their cell phones to the local emergency rooms, and they were empty. There's hardly anybody there. So I'm not denying this is a serious problem, and in some parts of the states it's really bad. But when we see things like that, the people lose faith in the whole idea. So that's why you saw everybody wear masks the first time, predominantly. And this time they're like, well, I don't know if they're telling the truth anymore. They're, they're losing faith. Okay. Would you agree that government derives its power from the consent of the governed? I'm pretty sure that's a foundational rule in exactly. democracy. Yes, sir. So since the majority of the population has no problem with social distancing, hand washing, minimizing time in indoor areas or those with little ventilation or temperature measurements, would you agree that the public consents to those measures? I mean, it's not like it's come up for a vote. So I, I, if there's kind of a, asking, a vote if you look around. If, if you're asking, you know, or is there polling of showing we, if there's support for mitigation measures? I think that there, there's polling. Well, I think if Louisiana, you if you drive support. around Louisiana, you you get your poll on that. So what I'm asking is, why are we pushing masking when large swaths of Louisiana doesn't consent to it? Why why do we continually push things that people don't want to do? Wait, because it's, excuse me, excuse me, please. We're not going to have that now. If I have to move this side, which is where the noise seems to come, I'll do. I'll move you out in the hall. And you won't be in here. Let so, these people speak. So the real reason. Go ahead. I'm sorry. The real reason I'm asking that is because so you I want think, to answer your question. Well, well let I mean, me I, let me follow it up. Fine. Do it's you fine. realize when we force things on people they don't consent to, it erodes government's power. I mean, the more we force things on people that don't want to do it, it, it just erodes the power of government, and and that's the whole whole crux of why a lot of people are having problems right now you want me to answer now sure okay so y your question was why is the mask mandate in place and then you you laid a condition on that saying if the if the people don't want to do it first off i it, it shouldn't matter what the polling is on this but i mean i i think you can see that most people have supported what the mitigation measures that have been put in place from the beginning of this and, and continues today. But the answer is because it's going to be the thing that helps us slow down and stop the spread of Delta. And because it's not just about us, it's, it's about the, the car crash victim who may be fully immunized and perfectly healthy but can't find a hospital bed 
to, to go to in the middle of the, the night or the heart attack victim who can't find a hospital bed. It's got nothing to do with COVID, but they can't find a hospital bed because in, in you may not believe that's happening, and that's fine. You're entitled no, to No, I, I, I actually do think it's happening, but I don't think it's universal. I mean, my wife did elective surgery two weeks ago. She was the only one in there. There was one other early in the morning. But I was in the waiting room with 40 or 50 seats. I was the only one there for six or eight hours. She had four nurses tending to her. So even though that's anecdotal, it, it causes a little doubt. It just makes people go, I don't know if it's as bad or, and that's not the, not the point. The point is we got to restore their trust, more transparency. We got to push things we know will help them, vitamin A, D, C, all those things I was talking about. Push those things. Tell them, hey, obesity is a huge factor. You need to fight this. You need to exercise. You need to get outside. You need to eat well. Emphasize those things and build up that natural immunity. And then when the people realize we really care for their health, then they'll go, you know what, maybe that mask thing's a good thing. I don't know. I'll, I'll research that. And I think they may be pushing something good. That, that's my point in saying that. Well, I can assure you the Office of Public Health, that's their name, the Office of Public Health, they didn't just start looking at, at obesity because you suggested in a committee hearing. They, it's what they've been doing for a long time of, of looking at ways to, to, to improve health outcomes in this state on all of those issues because they are critically important. And, and this pandemic has drawn uh, a, a put in highlight a lot of those longstanding um, poor health outcomes that we had in this state. And it's something that, that is critically important for, for our present and our future. But just because someone is diabetic or has hypertension or is obese, they don't deserve to die because they get COVID. We got to care of those people too. And every one of those we lose is a brother, sister, daughter, parent, and that is devastating a family and we have and that's why i'm advocating for health measures that are that here. are known to work let me ask you one last question is it true that uh, ldh partners with mcdonald's and krispy kreme to deploy the experimental vaccine <laughs> that's if you all. say so okay. thank you mr chairman